everybody. Top of the afternoon, Sunday Sessions, episode 41, here to deliver you a ton of information about growing your e-commerce business. Super excited to be here. For anyone that doesn't know who I am, my name is Eric Castellano, and I've been in the e-commerce game for about a decade, crushing massive numbers, shipping 3 million orders a month, and helping people just like you at all levels of business growth, help you optimize your processes and your systems so you can achieve greater sales, greater profit, and provide financial freedom for you and your family. That's the name of the goal for me. So welcome, excited to have you here. Uh, the purpose of these calls is a live Q and A, right? I answer your questions, deliver information to help you grow your business. So if you got some questions, let them rip my friends. Um, any advice or guidance on getting a product that's been in hazmat review for over a year to be deemed as a hazmat or not? Didn't create the listing and been FBM in this product. Yeah, so um, there's something called an SDS form or an MSDS. It's a material safety data sheet. Um, if you go onto our YouTube channel right here and you search Amazon Lit Hazmat or Amazon Lit SDS or MSDS, I think just Amazon Lit Hazmat will populate it. We actually show you step-by-step step how to fill that MSDS form out and submit it so Amazon can review the documentation and make a better determination of if that product is actually a hazmat or not. Because we've had success getting products that were classified as hazmats, reclassified as non-hazmats, and then the ability to send them FBA was possible. It used to be a bigger problem back in the day, not so much anymore. But sometimes you got to whip up a quick MSDS form. At what point you recommend moving into a warehouse currently using a 3PL with a 50 cent prep cost, make small and like difficult. Um, listen, 50 percent prep, 50 cent prep cost is rather good. It's rather good. It's cheaper than my prep cost. It just depends. It depends on, on the volume you're doing and how efficient. So at the end of the day, when you're considering prep uh, prep center versus warehouse, Cost of prep isn't the only decision that you need to make when you're considering which one to go with. It's not the only considering factor. You have to consider quality control, speed of shipments, right? Time that it takes the prep center or your own warehouse to package the inventory. These are all things to consider. It's not always about return on cash when you're looking at a prep center cost versus a warehouse cost, right? Because if your prep center is taking two weeks to process your inventory, get it to Amazon and they're not using 2D barcodes and then it takes even longer for them to get it. Like I rather open up my warehouse because I can get it to Amazon in three to five business days. Yeah, Emra. We've been praying for you, brother. Everybody keep turkey in your prayers. That's terrible what happened over there. Like, it's ridiculously terrible. It's so sad. We're praying for you, man. And donate too if you can possibly. That would be huge. Uh, Joe B asked if there's a way to tell how much stock Amazon has. AZ Insight will tell you how much stock they have unless they're hiding their inventory. And then sometimes, shit, what's it called? Um, it'll come to me. But there's another software you could use that sometimes overrides the, the inventory limits, stock checkers. Oh, how many? Thank you, Roxy. How many? There we go. Three to four week lead time is not terrible. It's also not the best. So we do buy some products that have three to four week lead times. You just have to review the listing data and make sure when you check back, you know, six months, 12 months, that the price is consistent, consistent, consistent. Oh, uh, see, you got to ask your question, though. You just said, so you have a lot of this in the UPC column. A lot of what? You didn't put what it was. Oh, spaces. Just Google how to remove hyphens in an Excel file. There's a very short equation you could plug in. Just Google, Wasim, how to remove hyphens in an Excel file. It's like you're going to put uh, quotations, hyphen, quotation, and then a space, and then a comma, and then just quotation, quotation, comma, and then parentheses. And it will remove them. I don't know, I don't know the uh, exact equation, but it's something similar to that. Just Google how to remove hyphens. It'll take you 30 seconds. Control H and then replace the hyphen. Don't put anything in the replace by field. Absolutely, Shapsy. Thank you for your help. And I'm excited, uh, Shapsy, if you applied, if if you were accepted, you should get an email immediately after with a link to my calendar. Um, if you weren't accepted, it's because you didn't submit that you had enough funds to join. So if, it, if you got something like, I apologize, you're not quite ready, um, it took you to our free beginners bundle, you'd have to resubmit if you have money to invest. Shapsy, just got the email, so pick a time that fits your schedule. I purchased a half pallet of wet ones and some listings are hazmat and some aren't. So I had to only send in listings that were not restricting me. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, that's something you should have checked before buying it. 
we always suggest add the products to an FBA shipment to make sure there's no restrictions. A lot of times too, AZ Insight will provide that information and most, uh, most Chrome extensions that live on the Amazon listing will provide that information. Um, and just because it's a hazmat, well, you could, you're probably not approved for the hazmat program, right? And they're very slow on accepting new requests and approving new people in hazmat right now. Yeah, this is a great question. How do you calculate inbound transportation fees when it comes to oversized products? How do you make sure your margins will be there? So if you haven't sold any oversized products, I'd suggest putting about $1.75 for inbound transportation fees. And then your goal would be to then track your expense of shipping for, you know, five, six, seven, 10, 15 hazmat or oversized shipments. And then you'll be able to have an average, a real company average of what it costs you to send an oversized shipment. You know, we're averaging about $1.75 for an oversized shipment, for an oversized product, one ASIN. I prefer to create all my listings with GS1 barcodes, 100%. If you're creating a new listing on Amazon, it's highly recommended you purchase your UPCs from GS1 directly. GS1 is the universal barcode distributor, right? It's like the plug for barcodes. Now, could you go like speedy barcodes or whatever barcodes.com? Yeah, you could, but I just don't risk it because the last thing I want to do is build an ASIN and start selling, you know, 500, 800 units a month. And then all of a sudden, because I want to be a cheapskate and pay a dollar or 50 cents for a UPC from Speedy Barcodes, instead of getting whatever they are, 10 bucks or 20 bucks per UPC from GS1. Now I dumped all this money into advertising, creating an optimized listing. And lo and behold, you know, it instantly gets removed from Amazon or after I build it up, it gets removed from Amazon because I didn't create it the, cost the right way. Um, so currently your restock limit is 1000 units. How do I increase it? So um, I can't recall off the top of your head, so I don't want to guide you in the wrong direction, but I'm pretty sure Amazon now, it might be nine weeks or it's like 13 weeks. It's some, it's some, they put a new restriction where it's like an amount of the weeks that you're stuck at a thousand unit restock limit. And then once you complete that week term, um, you're able to get an increase. And Amazon on July 7th or January 17th, they, they changed the infrastructure for restock limits. And you're now able to request and purchase increased cubic storage on a month to month basis for the coming month, not for the current month, but for the coming month. So you're able to go in and request an increase for March, for example, you put in the bid of what you're willing to pay. And if you win it, they'll be, they'll increase your, uh, your cubic feet storage and your ASIN limit. Now, I'll probably do a completely separate video on that because I want to jump back in there. I read all about it the other day, but I didn't, you know, um, absorb all the information to talk about it in a sense that I'm confident sharing all the information with you. So I'll double check on that. We can talk about that probably next week. Um, on, a pro on a new product, you make a small test order by, or if the research dictates, do you buy a large amount? So yeah, if the, if the data, like a small test order typically is like, you know, 18 to 36 units. You know, it all depends on the volume of the SKU. If the SKU is moving thousands of units a month, it almost doesn't make sense to do a test order of 18 to 36 units, especially if all the data checks out. You looked at the buy, buy box statistics of competitive seller, you analyzed the keep it chart. And if everything makes sense, it's like, why are you only gonna buy 18 or 36? So I'm absolutely going more, um, going deeper, comfortable going deeper on products where the sales volume supports going deeper on products, 100%. Awesome flipping, flipping Ben Amazon. Excited to see you at MSC, all LA right now, but I've been able to work with sales managers on a handful of sites and can't wait to move to wholesale. Awesome. And for anybody going to MSC, I got I got a special uh, special thing to provide anybody down there. So super excited about super excited about it. It's going to help you provide you a lot of value. A Miami seller conference. It's a it's an event in Miami. Sold out though sold out for, I always find this happens, right? I have an event, these guys have an event. It always happens too. They talk about the event for five, six, seven months in a row, right? Uh, it's on social media, it's on YouTube, it's on TikTok, it's on Instagram. People are sending DMs, the link's in the bio. And then like a week or two before the event, it's like somebody who's been following, liking all our posts. They're like, oh, you're having an event? It's like, yeah, I've been talking about it for six months. I'm having an event. We've been literally posted about it every single day. 
send an emails. People are like, oh, I didn't know. It's like, what do you mean you didn't know? Are you alive? You have to know. You literally been putting it in front of your face. And then they can't go because it's sold out by the time they figure it out. This gentleman asked, do you recommend contacting the brand that you're planning to buy from a distributor to see if they require to become an authorized seller on Amazon or if they have any restrictions? No, that would be a nightmare if that was the wholesale business model. That would literally be a nightmare. Um, what you can do, though, is you can usually figure that out by looking at their listings on Amazon. You know, popping up some of the brand listings, seeing if it's the same sellers on all of them, seeing what the keep it charts look like. You'll be able to figure that out just doing some research. All right, my friends, this has been a pleasure. I appreciate spending this time with y'all. Yeah, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you. Some, some of you in Miami next weekend, some of you in Las Vegas the following weekend, and some of you out in California the following weekend after that. So one of my favorite things to do is to meet all you in person. And uh, yeah, appreciate y'all. Have a beautiful night. Stay grateful and stay with my friends.